Last week, we talked about the benefits of having a life plan. Well, today, we're going to go a little bit deeper and talk about why you need a life plan to accelerate your goals. So let's jump in. We got an exciting conversation today with a special guest. Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Ken Freire here with a special guest, Joel Miller. Joel, what's up, man? Happy Monday. Hey, man. So excited to be here. I know. I'm excited because I finally get to talk to someone besides Marissa. This is awesome. You know, (laughs) I can appreciate that. However, since she will be listening to this, I think we need to be very careful. I'm so glad that I get to be talking to Joel today. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a fun time. Well, Joel, uh, if for those of you who don't know, Joel is the chief product officer here at Full Focus. He's the mastermind behind all of our products and all the things that we design. And uh, he's been extremely helpful in designing this newest one, uh, which is called Life Focus. But today, what we really want to focus on is talking about why, like, why should we even have a life plan? And what's the problem, Joel, if you want to start with this, like, what's the problem with having goals without a life plan? Every year, unless something weird happens in our life, our family takes a trip down to the Florida Panhandle. So we live in Nashville, Tennessee, just south of Nashville, Tennessee, and we like to uh, hit that freeway and drive all the way down to the coast. Having a life plan is like knowing you're going to end up at Rosemary Beach or knowing you're going to end up at 30A. So that's where you want to end up. Without a life plan, however, it's kind of like starting on that journey and stopping at Huntsville. And I got to say, there's nothing wrong with Huntsville, Alabama, but it's not 30A. It's not the beach. And like goals without a life plan are going to get you about 30% of the way to where you want to go. They're not enough. They're not enough because they don't actually go far enough out. They don't project your life far enough out. And so you end up with maybe a lot of very successful short trips that don't ever add up to the beach. And trust me, you want to get to the beach. So if you want to get to the beach, you need a life plan. If you want to go the full distance, you need a life plan. Yeah. I I love that analogy because what I, I have found in my personal life is that when I haven't thought about where do I want to be 10, 20, 30 years from now, it can feel like I was really successful that year. But when then I mm-hmm. take it into comparison with where I actually want to go, I'm like, man, I totally took a bunny trail. I totally, totally. got off the wrong route and I need to find a way back. Uh, yeah. And and in fact, I think this, is, you guys helped me because we went through the life planning process back in December. And uh, we did this together. And I remember writing stuff down and you were kind of there helping facilitate it. And like something sparked in my own heart because I haven't looked at my life plan in a while. And I was like, oh my gosh, right. is, this is exactly what I should be doing with my life right now. And I loved how the things that I'm doing at Full Focus lined up very well with where I wanted to go 10 years from now. You know, when in the goal setting process, we talk about the importance of your why and Normally, the way we instruct people to to set goals is like you talk about the what, that's the goal itself, and then you get connected to that why. What's the motivation behind this? And one of the things a life plan does for you by projecting yourself out 10 years, say, uh, in the life focus process, that's what we recommend. Uh, Projecting yourself out 10 years actually helps provide additional motivation because you can paint a bigger, better picture of your life in 10 years and say like, this is what, this is the future I want to create for myself. And that future can be powerfully motivating. So when we talk about like people lose their way, when they uh, lose their why, that's what's going on here. And if you want to have a powerful anchoring kind of why, like a North pole sort of why that orients your compass, that's why you need a life plan because it ends up creating not only direction, but then its own motivation for getting there because the desired end is so attractive. I love that. And and you actually jumped right into the next part of this is just like the benefit, the, the, the reasons people would desire a life plan. The first one would be the why. It's the motivation behind it. And yeah. I realized that the more I could keep it in front of my eyes, the more motivated I am, right? The more I'm like, oh, this is why I'm doing this. This is exactly what I'm pursuing. Uh, I love that. 
What are some other benefits, or not benefits, but what are some other desires that people would have for wanting a life plan? Well, direction also relates to meaning. Mm -hmm. And when your life has a purpose, uh, these are all kind of like metaphors, ultimately. Like, lives don't have direction the same way an automobile might, or the same way an arrow or, a, or something else might, a projectile. But if you're going to throw yourself, if you're going to hurdle yourself through this thing we call human existence, having some direction is really valuable. And what direction equates to what it feels like is meaning. It feels like purpose. And there is nothing harder than to live this existence without purpose. So when you ultimately have a sense of purpose that comes from that sense of direction, that is another very powerful gain. That's a very powerful pickup from having a life plan. And what goal setting in combination with that does is goals become like the means to that end. Ultimately, the goals become every stop along the way until you reach that. And ultimately that adds up to a whole sense of significance that you might otherwise be denying yourself. So a second thing beyond the why, beyond uh, like the direction that you're setting for yourself is the sense of purpose that comes out of it. Dude, I love it. You know, I love talking about purpose. I could talk about it all day. Oh, yeah. I love the the emotions it brings to it. Emotions aren't the end all be all, but when you think about it, I think a lot of times and a lot of reasons why people are bored in life or are walking with uh, despair is because they lack yep. purpose. They don't know where they're going. Totally. And that's what I love about the life planning process, especially the way we've set it up is because you're just invigorated. Like there's so much excitement to it that you're like, I can't believe that this is what I could architect for my life. Right. So, so right. can you just like yep. walk us through a little bit more of the results of when you do experience that purpose, what happens to an individual? Well, this would be like a third reason for uh, a life plan, but that's the growth, the personal growth that comes out of it. When you are living into your purpose, you're going to grow. And I know a lot of people dismiss life planning because they'll say things like, well, the best things in your life were never planned. And you know what? That's honestly true. If I go back and I look at my life, the best things that ever happened to me, along with the worst things, were rarely ever planned. There were just things that happened. And then I responded to them. And uh, the life I currently experience is a product of all of those random happenings and my responses to them or my seem most seemingly random happenings and my response to them. But this is like a key idea here. It's not the life plan, ultimately, that is the win for you. It's the life planning that is ultimately the win for you. Because while a life plan will give you direction, it will give you purpose, and all of those things are true, what it really does is it changes you along the way. And that growth that you experience personally is the kind of person and this is the key idea here, that's the kind of person that can respond to the random stuff that happens without blowing it up, that can respond to the random stuff that happens and turn it to your advantage. And so the personal growth that you experience through the process of life planning and through the process of pursuing that plan, it's going to like equate you with your own, acquaint you with your own agency. It's going to remind you of your own power. It's going to remind you of the like the, the agency you bring to situations. When you are able to bring that agency to bear in situations, you will get a better result out of them, whatever they are. And ultimately, you will either steer them towards the direction that you have predetermined in your life plan or the growth that you experience along the way will enable you to imagine an even better future than the one you have previously imagined. So personal growth is like a key thing. And honestly, this underscores everything we do at Full Focus. You know, like, we are really all about people getting the double win. And what that practically means is that we are growing more fully into all the different domains of our lives and giving them the, the attention that they deserve. The best way to do that is through this personal growth. And one of the best ways to facilitate that is by the exercise of life planning. Yeah. And, and what I love about the life planning process is that what we're saying is we're trying to be intentional with our personal growth because we could either totally. let life life help us grow, right? Or grow us. Or and we could say, no, it no. It will, right? It will. Yeah. 100%. We know it happens. It just, may not, it just may not get you where you ultimately want to go. Exactly. I know this past month, uh, I've had several sicknesses. You guys have had several sicknesses over the yeah. past couple months. And we're like, we're, we, there's growth from that, but that wasn't the growth we were planning. 
right? Uh, right. And it still was good. It was necessary for us to go through those things. But at the end of the day, there's still certain things in our hearts that we want to go pursue. And this is where life planning takes us, right? Where we're like, 100%. let's go for this type of growth. I, I was listening to a, a little reel the other day mm-hmm. where they were talking about, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to decide if I fully agree with this, but so we could dialogue about it right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they said something like this, like, hey, I'm not going to accept you for who you are because there's so much more greatness in you in the fu- that you need to tap into. And if I accept you for who you are right now, that means that you may just stay stagnant. But he's like, I want to challenge you in a healthy way. I'm going to challenge you. And I was like, I don't know if I fully agree with everything he was saying, but that principle still stands of like, man, if I love someone, if I care for someone, I'm actually going to mm, want to yeah. push them. I'm going to want to challenge them to become the best that they can be. And one of those ways is through life planning. I love that idea. And I love it not because, and I, first off, I love your ambivalence about the idea. This is like one of those things where it's not an either or, it's a both and. Like yeah. all of us have inherent dignity that means in a sense, we are all okay, just as we are. All of us have something worthy. Uh, all of us have something um, worth respect in us the way that we are. But all of us are capable of so much more also. And if we settled for what we are today, we miss out on the growth that we might intention that we might get. We're going to grow one way or the other. This is like an inevitability. You know, everything changes. There's nothing that doesn't. So the question is, do you want that growth? Do you want that change to be positive? Do you want it to be intentional? Do you want it to benefit you in a way that is um, more intended or accidental or whatever? Because the things that change accidentally don't typically change the right direction. Um, If you think about the way most change happens in nature, it's towards disorganization, not towards organization. If you want things to change in a, in the right direction, you have to like create something. You have to make it happen in a particular way. And when I think about like settling for myself or settling for the way I am right now, as opposed to striving for something better, that honestly, I mean, it doesn't excite me. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. It kind of disappoints me. And I know that I'm capable of a lot of growth because I can look at my, I'm 48 years old. Okay. That means I've lived a while. Um, my kids would tell you that means I've lived a very long while. <laughs> when that, what I know for sure though, is that I look at myself at 38 years old. I'm way further at this point in my life than I was at 38. I can go back another decade. I mean, I was insufferable at 28. Um, I don't even want to know that guy anymore. Like I wouldn't hang out with him. Um, and I, if I go back to when I was 18, I was even worse. So like, I know decade by decade, I have changed. And some of that change has been very intentional. And I know that the change that has come through the intentional uh, attention that I've given it, that's been the good change. That's been the better change. And I want more of that in my life. So when I hear you talk about that kind of either or thing, I say like it's both and. Like we are all worthy of, of, of respect and dignity right now. And we're also capable of so much more. And if we just got serious about that, intentional about that, we could create something really amazing in our lives. Yeah, 100%. I, I was thinking about uh, when I first met my wife. This was now, what, 17 years ago, 19 years ago? If you would have wow, met awesome. her and I, we were at an internship program, and we were like the complete opposite individual. She was like the A player, the star, like everybody wanted right. to be like her and be with her. Uh, and I was a class clown. Like 100%. Right. And I still kind of am the class clown. I was going to say, Ken, I don't know that there has been a lot of change on that front. <laughs> and that front has it, right? But I was just kind of like, whatever, who cares? I just goofed around all the time. No one saw right. like my work ethic. No one saw my intention, uh, like that I was a very driven individual. And yeah. so I actually started to take myself seriously. And I'm like, you know what? I have a lot to offer. I better step up my game. I can't just be the class clown. Right. right. Uh, ten fast forward ten years. Now we're married. We've been married for a few years, and the people that met me, you know, and they met me ten years ago, they're like, "Who are you? You're completely different." And you're married to Bethany. Like, how'd you get her? You guys were like the complete opposite. Happen? What happened exactly? And you know, another ten years fast forward, and now they're like, "Ken, you're just like this man of God." That like, if you would have thought about that fifteen, eighteen years ago, we would never. I was a completely different person. Yeah, uh, but it's because I was being intentional. Part of it was again life planning and setting goals. I looked at both of those things and I said, "I need to step forward into what I believe God's called me to be." And how do I do right. that in the midst of all this versus just drifting in life? 
I was like, I want to be the best father, son, and husband I can possibly be. Let's take steps into that. And I started making yeah. habit goals. I started making achievement goals because, like you said, personal growth was the thing that I've always pursued because I truly believe at the end of the day that, like, your character can never uh, supersede your gifting, right? Like, so many people yep. want to be accolades or want the accolades and want stardom. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the character to back it up, you're just going to fall. It's worth demystifying goal setting and life planning for a second and just say what yeah. it is at its most basic. It's just setting an intention somewhere in the future, right? Mm. And all we're saying is for annual goals, that intention is, you know, it's like roughly a year out. Could be three months out, could be nine months out, but there's a horizon that's about a year out. Life planning is the same thing. It's just going further out. It's just saying, okay, now we're going to look 10 years out. And we recommend 10 years because... You can kind of imagine your life in 10 years. It's pretty hard to have useful planning on anything further out than that. In fact, 10 years is a bit of a stretch, but it's at least it's far enough out to be really like emotionally engaging. What's hard to be emotionally engaged at is like 20 years out, 30 years out, depending on how old you are. You know, like you may have a long, you may have a long runway and there's no way you're imagining your life at a hundred, you know, when you're 22, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can't imagine your life at 32 and that's inspiring, yep. like what you might accomplish over those 10 years. And so if you think about this idea of this simplified way of thinking about goal setting and life planning, just setting an intention out there. All right. So I'm going to set an intention a year out, another year out, another year out, and it's going to add up to what I want to be in 10, where I want to be in 10 years. And that's honestly kind of exciting because like once you start thinking through like, all right, well, what is it 10 years out for me to live in great health? What what does my uh, career, what does my, uh, like, what do my hobbies look like? Just think about the nine domains of life for a second. Think about those nine domains. Imagine yourself 10 years out. You can get really inspired with that kind of like horizon. And then all of a sudden now your goals have a direction. And that's what we mean by saying like goals give you 30% of the way there. You know, like you're not going to make it all the way to the beach one year at a time. But if you are pointed the right direction, you know where that end point is. You can make every one of those goals add up to the future 10 years out that you want. And you know what? One thing I love about the 10 years, and Joe, you actually talked about this uh, when we when we did our workshop together, was that like sometimes we underestimate what we could do in 10 years, right? But we overestimate yes. what we could do in a year. All the time. All the time. Where I'm like, oh, I think I could do this many stuff. And I, I remember, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but you said something that it actually gave me so much relief at, at the workshop when we were life planning because I was like, I have the next 10 years to try to make these goals happen. I don't have to make them in the next right. year or three or five. I have 10 years. And like, well, the pressure kind of came off so that I had yeah, the freedom totally. to actually go achieve those. Okay. I think it was Bill Gates that said that. So I don't want to like not attribute whoever said that. And if I have falsely attributed, it, you know, like listeners, please go ahead and correct us because I would rather <laughs> know. Um, however, what's cool about this is we forget the power of compound interest. Yeah, And if you think about like your savings account year over year, that's eh, pretty boring. If you think about your stocks year over year, that's pretty boring. 10 years, that's starting to sound like a different story because when you think about compound interest, compound interest means you're growing like that, say four, 10%, whatever it ends up being for you and whatever accounts it ends up being for you. All of a sudden that stuff is accumulating too, not just your principal. You're not just, you're not just growing what you... Uh, the initial amount you put in, you're growing the gains on everything you put in every time, right? That's what happens in life planning. And so like the kind of person you are right now is not the kind of person that can even accomplish those things 10 years from now. No sweat. You've got 10 years to get there and you're going to grow along those 10 years. And so over that decade, you're going to become the kind of person that can attain that 10 year vision. And so I think that's a tremendous relief because no, I have no idea how I'm going to get to where I want to go in 10 years. Ultimately, it's like saying that trip to the beach, I don't have enough gas. And the truth is I don't have enough gas to get all the way to the beach on that trip. I am going to have to stop and fill up. And yeah. your annual goals and the kind of work that you do from here every year until you get to the 10 years, those are like the gas stops that are going to refuel you that are going to refill you and you're going to be able to personally attain more and more and more in this compound way as you grow so that 
by the end of that stretch, you will be a transformed human. You will be a different kind of person, one who's capable of more, one who has actually attained more. And I think that's a really relieving thought and a very exciting thought. You don't have to be able to do it all now. You can't. And that's cool. The fact that you can't do it all now means the thing that you will be doing is going to be way better than what you can accomplish now. That's inspiring. And so that's what, that's what life planning enables. Dude, that's awesome, man. I love it. I'm, I feel like I want to go through it again just because it's so exciting. Totally, uh, and, yeah. And I know a lot of people who are like, man, I want to do this. And I encourage all of you, go do some sort of life planning. It's encouraging. Joel, you and I both know that we've done several different types of life planning out there. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are some challenges to the traditional life planning. Can you just walk us through like maybe one or two of those uh, challenges that yeah. people might encounter so that they could be mentally prepared for that? I think there's really two. There's like a psychological one and a practical one. And by psychological, we could say emotional. It's hard to think about your future. I mean, when we think about our future, we have to wrestle with who we are right now. We kind of have to deal with what that trajectory looks like. And looking in the mirror that way can be really uncomfortable. And that would be true under any circumstance. You know, like self-evaluation is not always the prettiest thing. Um, if you are, are a, uh, a religiously inclined person who goes to confession or some practice like that, um, that is like one of the most daunting things a person does at some level. And it's because you have to kind of like face to face reckon with who you are. And that reckoning can be daunting. That's one thought. The second thing that's related to that emotional difficulty is you're doing it, you know, like the, the compound interest kind of thing. Well, you're doing that compound thing with your, that emotional engagement too. So that let's say you're looking at your life at the end of your life. What is it amounted to? Like, oh gosh, if you're not trending the right way right now to imagine your life near the end of your life and try to take scope of what it all means and where, how it was all going to trend and like. Let's say you've got trouble with your kids or your job feels kind of dead end or whatever, whatever's going on. It's not, that's not great. You kind of magnify all of that into the future. And all of a sudden you've got this daunting, you know, like journey ahead of you that doesn't even feel like it will even amount to anything successful. Man, that's a bummer. Who wants to do that? So that's like number one, the emotional one. And then there's the secondary one, which is practical. And the, the practical one is like, Life planning requires that you sit down and have lots of ideas about your life and that you be able to write them all. And a lot of us are not idea people. A lot of us are not writers. And so you sit down with the, the mission of like, I'm going to spend a day, I'm going to go to the mountains and I'm going to like, or I'm going to go to the wherever, I'm going to go on a retreat. I'm going to take my yellow legal pad and my, my ballpoint pen and I'm going to write out my life plan. And, you know, like six or seven hours into the day, you've got a few notes. Maybe you've gotten started. Maybe you got halfway there, but you've run out of gas. You don't have any more ideas. You can't write any more out anyway. None of it now inspires you because you're feeling depleted. It's a, it's honestly, it can be a freaking bummer. And so like that, those emotional and practical obstacles are really, uh, difficult for people to get over. And so when we created life focus, we said we need to fundamentally solve those two obstacles. And so that's what we did. We created a way to basically gamify the whole process. So it ends up feeling more like, like a game. It ends up feeling like something enjoyable and ends up feeling something fun. And it solves those basic issues. So like the emotional stuff, we figured out a way to soften all of that. So basically you think about your life 10 years out, you're not going all the way to the end of your life. You're just looking 10 years out. You're looking from a place of you're starting from a place of abundance. You're starting from a place of excitement about your future because you're going to imagine your life 10 years out on your birthday. All right. Like here you are 10 years out, you're a decade older. It's your birthday. People are there. It's a party. Like what is your mindset at that moment? It's positive. And you're thinking about like, what have I accomplished over these 10 years? And the cool thing is you don't have to come up with all the ideas on your own because we created a way to basically help you ideate. We facilitate the ideation process. So the Life Focus Kit comes with 11 decks of cards. And these decks of cards basically serve you up one awesome life scenario after another that enable you to say, I identify with that. I identify with this other thing. I identify with this third thing. 
as many as you want till you've basically created a sketch of this future. And then you can write those in your own words. You can just plagiarize right off the cards. No one's going to know except for you. And that's awesome. So you can basically just build your life right out of these cards. And you can say, that is like exactly what I would have said if I had the ideas on my own and they just came to my mind. Like, well, we've done some of that thinking for you. We've sparked all of that. So now you can use your imagination for the actual fun part of that, for building it, for uh, refining it, for making it feel more your own, for personalizing it, instead of generating it all from scratch to begin with. And what that means is life planning ends up becoming, instead of this grueling task that you have to like work at and, and it's difficult and the whole thing, it ends up feeling like over the course of an afternoon or a few evenings, you can put yourself together a life plan that has you totally excited at the end. It was easy. It was fun. And like, honestly, it's a breeze. So that was what we intended to do. And I think we succeeded with the tests that we've done. It's been great. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I told you this, Joel, I, I've been teaching in some form or fashion life planning for the last 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wish I would have had this product because of how simple and how easy it was for people. And for myself, I mean, I remember going through it. And even on the second iteration, uh, you, me, and Hannah, remember we were sitting by the, the kitchen oh, yeah. table and we're going through it and I'm just doing this. And you were like, oh yeah, that's totally a you when I wrote it down, wrote down my mission statement. Like we the all mission like, statement is so powerful. It was so powerful. I, gotta, and I was just like, ah, I got to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Like a personal mission statement is part of this idea of having purpose, right? It's part of this idea that you're going to give yourself a, like a scope. This is what you're going to be doing in your life. Why are you here? Right. Answering that. Why am I here? Question is hard. And to just sit somebody down and say, hey, why don't you just jot down a mission for your life? Like, that's like telling somebody to just figure out, you know, I don't know, uh, relativity on their own or something. It's like, it's too dang hard. It's too dang complicated. We created a deck of cards that can basically walk you through a formula that identifies like the roles that you play in life, the impact that you want to have in the world and all the strengths and abilities that you bring to the table in order to get those things accomplished. And just by shuffling through these cards, you can basically draft a mission statement that you can simply refine. I did mine without, like I, Hannah, I, Hannah worked on this part of this process on her own. Okay. So I hadn't even seen anything other than the sketches and what she was thinking, how it was going to work. And she said, like, you do it, try this out and see if this works. I sat down and in 30 minutes, I had come up with a life mission that I was like, I am so jazzed about this. It was so easy to do. It was so simple. And I literally could have done it. Uh, I don't know, like, like out of my own mind, I could have done it. It was like, so, so it was served up so simply for me. And I just thought this is, this is a total game changer for people. Imagine just like everyone listening, having a mission for your life that you formulated for yourself. And you not only formulated it for yourself, but it was easy and it helped like literally change the way you make decisions every day. It changed the way you pursue the goals that you pursue every day. It changed the way you think about how you're going to be productive that day. Like that's super empowering. And it literally takes 30 minutes or even less. Sometimes I'm a slow study and I can tell you right now it was super easy. Oh yeah. I mean, and it helps you actually, When if we think about productivity, it helps you to say yes to the things you really want to say yes to and no to the things that totally. you shouldn't do because they could yep. derail you. I mean, I could tell you when I did the mission statement 12 years ago, I wrote a personal mission statement. It took me weeks to wrestle through right. like the right verbiage. And I'm like, am I there? Is it this or that? And uh, then I remember doing the exact same thing Hannah told us to do, told me to do the 30 minutes. I did it. And I, I did a side-by-side -side between the one I did 12 years ago which quite frankly oh, wow. was hard for me to remember everything that I wrote then, right? Versus the new one that I did by just following our process. And it was like 90% close. And I was, That's a, amazing. I was astonished by that. And then I was just like, wow, this one is actually written. So the, the second one was written so much better and concise. And I was like, dude, this is a game changer. Like I remember telling Hannah, I'm like, we have created this amazing tool that I think will enlighten and empower so many people to actually do goal achievement. Because I, I think part of the reason why most people end up failing in their goals is that they forget their why, they forget their life purpose. Totally. And, and part of it is that they just don't know what it is. But if you they had yeah. it, 
in a very concise formula, and, and we are complex beings, I know that, but like something that could help us move directionally in the right place, it is so powerful. And that's what I love about this thing. I think you and I could go on and on about this product, and you've talked a Easily. lot about the benefits of it. Uh, if right. you could leave our audience with just one more piece of advice of like why they should do this. I mean, we've talked a lot about it already, but like why they should focus on life planning. And it may not be our thing. They could go traditional route, but you've heard the two challenges with it and how we've simplified it. Why should they go pursue life planning? I think it comes down to having a holistic approach to achievement, to becoming personal growth. When you are able to look at your life from the vantage of 10 years out and you're able to say, this is the kind of person I want to become. This is the kind of life I want to live 10 years out. You're able to take the nine domains of life and arrange them in such a way that they are fundamentally taken care of. Like you've given them all the level of intentionality that they need in this planning process. And you can now as you set goals, you can kind of check in. As you take your life score assessment, you can check in. Like, how close am I? Am I like really veering off track? And what ends up happening is instead of goals becoming like a lag measure on your success, which is kind of how it is if you're just going year to year, they become lead measures on your success as you're pushing towards your 10-year vision. And if you do that in all the nine domains, you're talking about a holistic view of your life in which you are not letting balls drop you're not losing track of important things. Instead, you're giving everything the attention that it needs at the level it needs it. And you're doing it in such a way that 10 years away, 10 years from now, a decade out, you'll be able to look back and be satisfied with the kind of growth that you had. You'll be able to look back with the kind of um, appreciation for the work that went into all of that over these years and not have regrets about the decisions that you made and have at least fewer regrets. I mean, we're probably all, if we're sensitive people, we're probably all going to know areas where we fall short. We're all going to know areas where we could have done better. That's just normal. But you can mitigate a lot of unnecessary regrets just by being intentional. And by having this kind of like this scope, this 10-year horizon, you're going to be able to get to where you want to go with as few regrets as possible. And you will have done it while giving the proper attention to the whole scope of your life, all the nine domains. And that's what we mean when we talk about attaining the double win. And honestly, this like life focus makes it nearly impossible not to get there. And so that's why we're so jazzed about it. Dude, Joel, I love this. I, I so appreciate you. I so appreciate this conversation that we get to have because we want it. We want to make it nearly impossible for you not to get the double win. And as many people, we're like, we keep envisioning millions and millions of people who have uh, figured out a, a life plan in an easy way, an empowering way, and then executing on their goals, achieving the double win. That is, that would, that's very fulfilling for us as a company. Yeah. That's what we want. And I that's mean, what we created. That's this. what we're here for. Like, exactly. You got a personal mission if you do this. We have a company mission. It's to make it nearly impossible for people not to get the double win. And here we are. This is like, this is why we're here. This is the whole deal. Exactly. So for, for uh, all the listeners who are listening and you're like, man, I want this. If you are interested in it, you could go check it out at fullfocus.co forward slash life focus, right? And uh, we, you could buy the kit. You can also come join us at a two-day live event, right? Imagine to taking two days to figuring out the next 10 years of your life. Can you clarify that it's a virtual event, right? Yeah. So yeah, you said come join us. Oh, come join us at a virtual event. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Your it electrons is a will be our electrons. It will be amazing. Ooh, how does that work? I thought it was just visual, but <laughs> I would say join us. It is going to be a phenomenal event. Uh, if, again, go to fullfocus.co forward slash life focus to check it out. Uh, come to a live event or you can do it on your own by buying the kit and the course and go from there. Uh, with that, thank you, Joel, so much for joining us here at Focus on This. Thanks, Ken. That was awesome. Thanks for joining us on Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet. So please share it with your friends and be sure to join the Full Focus Planner community on Facebook so you can benefit from the creativity and encouragement of people chasing big goals just like you. We'll be here next week with another great episode. Until then... Stay, Stay focused. focused.